there's a real interest in the interaction that an aquaculture farm plays in the marine environment. One of the things that it does is give structure to um, a whole lot of other organisms. So what was once just plain water that things would drift by, now is almost like an oasis. Most of the studies in the past have been looking at the negative impacts on the animals living in the sediments directly underneath and surrounding the farm. But there's also a potential that there's other more positive impacts of aquaculture because we're essentially putting a bunch of energy, a bunch of food into the system that the animals that live under and around the farm can take advantage of and increase their fitness, their productivity. With this research, we're looking at two main things. One is the movement of crabs and lobsters in and around aquaculture sites, and the second is the condition of these animals. So to follow the crabs and lobsters, what we've done is we've set out a whole big grid of hydrophones, and we glue little sound emitters onto the back of crabs and the lobsters. And then the hydrophones can follow the movement of the animals on the bottom by triangulation of the noise. Using this data, we can find out a lot about the behavior of lobsters and crabs. For example, were the individuals present under the culture site? Did they exhibit foraging behavior? Did they exhibit habit-seeking behavior? How large were their home ranges under the culture site? 869, they were all gone from there. So the way we're doing the second part of this experiment is we're looking at the lipids within crabs and the lobsters that we're out sampling. The idea is that the food that's being given to the salmon that we think that the lobsters and crab are eating has a different class of lipids inside of it. And so we should be able to follow those lipids, those fats, inside the crabs and the lobsters. Lobster and crab samples were collected near the farming site to check the lipid profiles of these individuals, as well as in a reference area, to compare the numbers with data from an area free of influence from salmon feed. During dissection of the lobster, I remove the hepatopancreas, which is similar to the liver in that it's an accumulating organ. And this is the organ in which we think the omega-3, omega-6 ratio signal will be the most off balance, making it the best indicator of the vegetable oil signature that we expect to see. We're also conducting a lab experiment to confirm how long animals have to be exposed to this feed before we detect a signal. What we're doing in the lab is basically calibration work. We have 60 lobsters, all in individual tanks, and for about the past two months now, each lobster has been on a precision calculated diet, ranging between 0% and 100%. So at the end of the experiment, we'll collect samples of hemolymph, which is more or less the lobster equivalent of blood, and we'll send it off to the lab so they can do a detailed analysis of all fatty acids detected in the hemolymph. And this helps us to make the connection between the lobster's lipid profile and the proportion of its diet coming from aquaculture feed. Once the method is calibrated, we'll be able to take any lobster out of its natural environment, do the same analysis and compare the result with our lab findings. Then, by comparing the lipid profiles of lobsters in different regions, we'll get a better idea of how much an influence aquaculture feed has on bottom-dwelling invertebrates living near aquaculture sites. And so this whole interaction is important to understand because there's a lot of interest on the part of fishermen, for example, that are fishing lobsters in the area and whether there's any benefits or problems that are occurring because of that, but also to the farmers. I mean, they want to know what's going on around their farm so they can at least be benign and possibly they could even enhance some things that we wanted enhanced. I like the work that I do because the results from my research are used in management of aquaculture. Um, that's to say that we're now looking at aquaculture in a much more holistic point of view than we used to in the past. And that's to some extent based on the research that I've been doing over the past few years.